Hello and welcome everyone, I am Maddles and welcome to another StarCraft 2 England cast. Today, fun little game, it is just a ladder game, just the one, no best of three, five, seven or nine, just this. Your one and only shot to beat your opponent. So, let me introduce these two players. In the lower left position, we do have the blue Zerg. It is Moose from Light Esports. And in the top right, we do have the red Terran. It is Pult who is an absolute powerhouse. Of course, I don't need to introduce Pult anymore, everyone will know it. Of course, Light Esports should be quite well known to most people. I had the pleasure of casting with their resident caster a few weeks ago with the EZ UK Masters and hope to do so again in the future. So that was definitely a fun experience. That was, of course, Zoya. And yeah, Light Esports are awesome people. You should check them out. Now, Pult, he is up against a Zerg player. What do you do in that situation? Generally speaking, you go one Rax command center because that is metagame to the max. What will Moose do? He'll get a hatchery followed by a spawning pool. 15, 16 supply most likely hatch pool. That is just what you do. And don't try and worry why. It's just what happens. It's just what you need to do and do it. Unless you see something completely crazy happening, which you most likely won't. Now, if we look around, we've got, of course, the Overlord coming to check up here. We've got the Drone most likely going the other way. Little does he know that you cannot spawn in these two positions, apparently. Um, but no, you can't, alas. And, well, there goes down the hatchery. We've got, of course, the Command Center first build out of pulp, but as part of the wall off. This is a nice compromise between going just complete balls to the wall, Command Center first, and actually saying, hey, you know what I need to do? I need to be a little bit safer and I need to get the supply depot down and I need to get the barracks first. So it's a good compromise, it just means you can float this down whenever you're happy to. The other cool variation I've actually seen from this is actually get the barracks down after and then you just chuck a third command center down. And you keep this one as part of your wall off, but you have three command centers exceptionally early. But it looks like Pult not going to go for something quite that crazy, instead getting off a second barracks. It's all looking okay for the time being. The supply depot now goes off, but of course Moose has scouted out everything he needs to. He knows a quick command center is coming down, so that means he needs to take his third relatively fast, because otherwise he will get economically behind, unless he deals some insanely good damage, which is unlikely against the Terran unless you do some kind of massive bailing bust, which is very risky to do. So, probably going to see a quick third base, I would imagine. Um, we do have a drone on its way down, so I'm thinking that this very well could be going to go and build a hatchery there, or instead it's just going to come over and mine a little bit. Few Zerglings are on their way down, meanwhile, Pult still hasn't taken any gas. Just happily mining away, getting up the double orbital command. He's got his second barracks up now, so he's going to be getting a good number of marines. May send some of these marines over just to try and be irritating. <coughs> May keep them back in order to be a bit more defensive. But all we know for sure is that four Zerglings are going to be able to pick off this poor little SCV who was just coming in to scout a little bit. Sees no gas though, so does get pulled information that he will require to make an informed decision about what's happening. Of course, if it was going to be a bailing bus or anything like that, you'd expect to see one of those gas down already. But no, Pult's perfectly safe for the moment, so he floats down his orbital keeps pumping out more marines and his choices now are do I want to try and attack this third base at some reasonable time or do I get my own third up quickly those are the big decisions you have to go for and it looks like Pult is going to go for the well I'm going to take the watchtower at least and then decide what I'm going to do after that he's also getting on the first two gas so very normal the only slight variation to this is because he went command center first he got two racks up obviously and then the two gas whereas if you went racks command center you then get two gas and tech up out of that so we see these rocks getting taken down so Moose, not comfortable taking his third base until they're down for the moment. He does have his first two gas up now, so he starts mining it. We've got a good number of queens out as well, so the creep spread is going to be very nice indeed. We've got, meanwhile, just the gas coming out for Pulp for the moment, and there goes the factory. I thought we were going to see a factory because we should sit and see a reactor after this next marine, but for the moment Pulp coming to apply some pressure. And with only the two queens there and a few zerglings, Moose should be able to hold this. I mean, there, while the marines are there, they, they can try and push this back, Moose can fall back. If he really feels uncomfortable, he can bring that third queen in. But to be honest, I would be comfortable holding off what is like six marines, I believe it is. No, seven marines, sorry. 
a, with two queens and a good number of speedlings, especially if they try and push up on creep. Because once they're up on creep, you will be able to get the zerglings around the back of them to stop their escape and start a step micro. Pult, though, using this aggression in order to get up his third command center. So he's applying pressure, taking map control, and then expanding behind it. It's really a fundamental that everyone should be applying to their own games. It's so critical to being successful in the game. Now, we do see the Marines committing very heavily here to dealing damage to this hatchery. They will die, all of these Marines, are cases that they just wanted to try and force a cancel before they basically die. And as we see, they're trying to get in a nice position, trying to get in between the minerals, and of course this wall, minimizing the amount of attack surface they've got for the Zerglings, and Paul doing a good job of cleaning most of that out. And of course the Queens will try and chase them down, but the Marines will be able to just stutter step their way to happiness. But of course with the completion of the hatchery, the creep does start to spread. And with that, the Queens are going to be able to keep up with the Speedlings now coming in as well. And the Marines, who so desperately fought to take down this third expansion, will die with nothing to prove for their mission. But looking back here, we do of course have Hellions coming out. We've got a Starport on its way as well. So... This is quite an interesting build because we're going to get some Hellions hit the field and then what I imagine we're going to get is Polt switch the factory and starport to get more medevacs because he's getting stim up and he's also getting a lot of marines out so instead just going to be going straight up into getting a good number of medevacs only a couple of Hellions to harass with as opposed to going for Banshee which is fine because he's getting up his third base he doesn't really need to be too much more on the aggressive and harassment side Looking here, obviously the baning nest coming out, we've got Lair as well. Did I just see a scan out of the corner of my eye? No, I didn't, so that's fine. Um, but yeah, Pult, he can float that orbiter down whenever he feels comfortable he can hold it. He has switched over the factory and starport as I thought, and that's a tech lab. So everything, as we would expect from Pult, he's going into marine tank medevac, which is the staple of strategies against Zerg. Really, it's... Fairly good. It's going to be very comfortable indeed to deal some nice damage. The Baneling Nest nearly complete, so Ling Bling Infesta is going to be the composition of choice for light at the moment. It's going to be fine. Obviously, some good fun quotes on clumps of, clumps of Marines is going to shut those down hard. Some Baneling hits shuts it down hard. All you've really got to worry about is the tanks, to be honest, in that composition. But as long as you get a good attack angle, you'll be fine. The Hellions now pushing forward, trying to stop this creep spread, which is starting to really get into full swing. We've got a good number of creep tumors there. This is all gained from having the extra queens, which I think is such a great thing to do. A nice little stim forward. We do have the 1-1 upgrades nearly finished for, uh, for Moose as well. As well. Hold though. Getting up siege mode. He's just trying to be a little bit aggressive with these marines, but does get them surrounded, unfortunately. The bailings connect very nicely. That was an absolutely brilliant surround by Moose there. And it was able to actually kill all of those bailings for losing one bailing and a couple of Zerglings. So that was really good. Now, looking up here, 2-2 upgrade starting for the Zerg player. We do have 1-1 one, one nearly finished for Pold. He's got his third base taken now. The first tank is out on the field. The Hellion's still trying to be irritating. They can't push onto the creep. If they go on the creep, the speedlings will catch up with them and will take them down. Meanwhile, one viking on its way out. This is always a good move to go. If you're getting a starport, get one viking. Because there are going to be lots of overlords sitting around just waiting for you to come and kill them. Now, of course, this base has been spotted now by light, uh, Moose Light, so he's able to take his fourth base in response to that to stay a base up. So, really playing effectively there. His timings are good. But Paul, he's going to have an, a nice advantage economically, or at least be equal economically for quite a while with the additional mules. We've got the rocks getting taken out now, the tank there sieged up, so Paul's staying in a bit more of a defensive position for the moment, but still using these Hellions to get some nice harassment going. The Zerglings trying to get this round, are they going to be able to trap any of those Hellions? No, they don't. Those Hellions, insanely lucky. They should all go and buy a lottery ticket individually, because they would all win. That is how incredibly incredibly close that was of course you've got to be careful not to lose those head-ins if you do want to harass the viking has racked up two kills so two overlords for one viking it's a good trade you see the fourth base good scouting the marines still pushing forward so pole they're not content with being defensive yet he's also rolling out with one of those tanks he's keeping two tanks back though just in case some aggression comes knocking at his door we've got hive starting at a very normal time, it was about 12.30 there. We've also got, of course, the 2-2 two -two upgrades for both players getting research. Only just starting for Pult. The investors get a good fun with both. The bailings don't connect quite there. They were able to get shut down with purely Marines alone. So, Pult moving back yet again. The fourth base, of course, up and running now. An awful lot of speedlings. All 
hugging around that single mineral patch. Clearly an important mineral patch for the Zerg player, but yep, looking up, we've got the tank still here, still tank production going nicely. The star point not really producing anything. Um, the medevac count up at four, so it could get a little bit higher to be honest. Tutu about to finish up for Moose, so he's going to have stronger Zerglings and Banelings, quite simply. And yeah, with Hive coming out, transitions into Broodlords are possible. Could also get Ultras, should he feel like it. I don't think it'll be Ultras, purely based on the fact that, hey, why would you not get an earlier Hive if you were going to go Ultras? But apparently he is going to go Ultras, so that is just proving me wrong. And again, Ultras are great up until a certain point. And usually if you're going to go Ultras, you want to start your Hive at about the 11 minute mark. But likewise, if you're going to go straight into Broodlords, you need to start your Spire pretty soon. And that was the one thing I was going to mention before the Ultralist Cavern was started, that hey, if it was going to be for Broodlords, you'd want to get your Spire down at about the same time as Hive starts, so you can start the Greater Spire really quickly. But of course, Pole now in a good spot. If he pushes before the Ultras comes out, he is going to be absolutely ace. Of course, Fungal Growths allow the Ultras to catch up the distance on the Marines and really crush their way through it. The tank's in a nice spot though for the moment. A good spread on the Marines as well, absolutely amazing, but Speedling's coming in from behind. Moose getting a great engagement there, just cleaning out everything perfectly. He's completely destroying this force from Pole. He got a nice round, he streams Zerglings in from the back, precisely as you would want to. Uh, but Pole, he's got reinforcements coming across the map. Of course, a lot of the Banelings were detonated there in that engagement, so that means this follow-up push, even though it's smaller, is going to be a bit more awkward to deal with. There are five Ultras on their way, though. This is great use of Infested Terrans, trying to get the tanks taken down, trying to soak up a bit of the damage. Unfortunately, the good tank spread out Pole means that Moose won't be able to kill them yet, but Moose is about 40 supply ahead. With a lot of speedlings coming out and a lot of ultras. He's also got 3 3 on its way with the Ultralisk armor upgrade getting researched as well. And with all of that, he's going to be able to really quite comfortably take out this relatively small force from Pold, who I don't believe even knows the Ultralisk cavern is down yet. Where even is that? Let's take a look. Oh no, he does. He has seen that, so that is good news. Um, I don't know if a drop went down that I missed, like a complete noob, but possibly. Meanwhile, if we look here, in comes the massive push from Moose. He's coming in with all the Ultras, Bailing streaming through, the Speedlings getting good surrounds on the tanks and taking it all out. One of the Ultras is going to fall, but, well, as we can see, Holt now in a difficult position just due to losing so much. The Marines trying to run away. The tanks do get a siege up, but not quite in time before the Speedlings do get the complete surround. A couple of Infested Terrans getting lobbed down, but Pold is getting absolutely destroyed now. The Ultras dealing great damage. They do have 4-2 upgrades, about to be 5-3. And um, with that, of course, they become just ever so strong. A great fungal growth traps all of those Marines, allowing the Ultras to close up the distance. Um, with this Pold goes under 100 supply, his fourth base almost certain to die near instantaneously with the amount of damage it's about to deal. And, well, we're losing this Planetary Fortress, obviously puts Moose in a good economical position, he will be a base up. Planetary Fortress is trying to get repaired but dies instantly, more reinforcements trying to come in, but there's the GG from Pole, knowing without that base, there's just no way he can come through. So, as we saw, that was a great game, and yeah, Moose dealt with it very, very effectively. All of that aggression from Pole, and Pole was just never able to get up a sizable force, and as a result, the Zoe Player 1. So, thank you very much for watching everyone. I hope you did enjoy. If you did, make sure you like the video. Leave a cool comment and subscribe. I will catch each and every one of you tomorrow for yet another new game. Bye for now.